this. Oh, hopefully this will not be a disorganized shambles yet again. Okay. You're probably here today because either A, you know you're autistic and you've recently received a diagnosis and want to know more about your neurotype, which I'm very much for, or B, you suspect you may be on the spectrum and are scouring the internet for every piece of information under the sun to validate your autistic experience, which is understandable because I've been there, same. I get it. So today I am going to go through seven characteristics of females on the autism spectrum that are less commonly talked about, but anecdotally seem very prevalent within the autistic community and the gender presentation. Hi, I'm Rebecca. Welcome to my channel and thank you for being here. My channel's main aim is to promote and raise continued awareness of neurodivergence, particularly ASE and ADHD, just because I have personal experience with both of those. I want my channel to be a space that legitimizes your struggles and your internal experiences as a neurodiverse individual. I want to eradicate the stereotypes that harmfully silo conditions to one presentation that stop people from being diagnosed, that perpetually invalidate their struggles and their experiences of life. I truly do think knowledge and acceptance is the way forward regarding neurodiversity and inclusivity because if neurotypicals are willing to listen and to understand how we interact and perceive with the world, I feel it's our duty to reciprocate and help them understand so we can all work together in order to create a happier, more inclusive world where we can all live more authentically. And a quick disclaimer, by no means is this list of characteristics to be used as a diagnostic tool to diagnose yourself. It is purely information based on my own personal perspective, anecdotal information and reading research studies. So please treat it as such. <laughs> but saying that, if you do find yourself relating to several or all of these, I would look further into the criteria of autism and a diagnosis. And in addition to this, I am taking the perspective of an autistic female in this video because that is what I identify as. I realize and respect that a high proportion of autistic individuals within the community do identify differently. And considering this, I actually think the criteria, hopefully in the future, will take this into account and cater for this gender diversity. Wherever you fall on the gender spectrum, you may or may not relate to these characteristics and just keep that in mind as we go through the list. Number one, if you're on the spectrum, you may find navigating romantic relationships really difficult. And unfortunately, this may have led you to find yourself in problematic situations and unfortunately experiencing sexual abuse, trauma, as this is not uncommon within the autistic community. And I think the high rate goes hand in hand with the added difficulty in understanding and interpreting nonverbal communication. Because if you think about flirting, it is almost entirely nonverbal. So growing up, and to this day, you may really struggle to flirt and to understand flirting. You may also really, really struggle to understand when someone says something that means something different because most of us, or a high proportion of us, are very literal people. And flirting, again, is purely figurative. You say something, it means something else. Well, I don't know. Just tell me straight. Verbalize what you need and what you want that's the way you're gonna get it, <laughs> you know? It's, oh. You also may have felt like a fish out of water in childhood, and you may have compared yourself to all your peers who seemingly found navigating romantic relationships just way easier than you did, and you just didn't understand why you were finding it so difficult, and why everyone around you was finding it so much easier. Number two, you suffer from a lot of internalized anxiety, 
and are constantly exhausted due to masking. What is masking? Let's all stop touring on what masking is. So masking or camouflaging is a strategy that is often used by autistic females. The behavior is not exclusive to that gender, but researchers have seen a high proportion of masking in females when comparing it to males. And masking is used to hide and adapt the individual's innate autistic characteristics so they appear more normal or more neurotypical. It is done to fit into non-autistic culture and the associated standards that society has created. Masking is a survival tact that autistic individuals use to navigate a world that uses a different communication style to their own. It is a way to help them socialize and to be accepted in a world that pathologizes and discriminates those who deviate from the behavioral standards we have created. And unfortunately, women, non-autistic and autistic, face unbelievable amounts of pressure to meet society's ideals. What women should be, what women should wear, what women should say. And unfortunately, society creating these roles creates such specific expectations that unfortunately don't often align with an autistic's way of living. But if the individuals do not meet these standards, you fear discrimination. You fear you will not be valued or accepted. How are you meant to find a place in the patriarchal system if you're not subservient to its standards and metrics? And I honestly think this is why we see a high proportion of masking behaviors in female autistics when comparing it to males. If you think you are a female on the spectrum, you may find that you have to lie about your special interests or your actual interests and replace them or declare more normative interests. You may go against your sensory profile preferences. You may force yourself to hug, even if your tactile versions deem differently. When I was younger, I never ever used to hug. I stood clear away from physical comfort. But as I grew up and throughout high school, I noticed and <laughs> looked into the fact that people require physical comfort to feel better. And I then started to force myself to do it rather than just sit idly looking at my friend crying and wondering what what the hell i need to do like i don't know whereas according to my sister people don't really think about that people don't really need to learn that it's just automatic like when people are upset you hug them you physically comfort and i was like cool i didn't know that and as a female on the spectrum you may constantly feel burnt out by trying to be someone you are not but with an added layer of confusion of who you actually are because it changes with different people in every situation. Like, I kid you not, one of my worst fears, worst fears, were if all my friends from different parts of the country met together with me because I, oh my God, I am so different with all of them. And I actually have different personas with all of them that I I was like, oh my God, they'll find, like, they'll, just, they'll find out, like, that I'm just not the person they think I am. I honestly thought everyone had this fear until I started to become aware of autism, how it presents in females. And I was like, oh my God, that's not, I am, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, I didn't realize that wasn't typical. Number three, suppressing honesty to make others more comfortable. My God, at this point. Often autistic people are more blunt. They are straightforward. They are more literal and prefer to say exactly what they mean. Life is easier that way. If you are autistic, you may find it really, really hard to understand what is actually appropriate to share in what situation and with who. And if that is the case, and you're anything like me, you have had to learn, manually learn, the unwritten rules of social communication through either error or others. So, aka friends. You may say something in a social situation that has had adverse reactions and you've made social faux pas, but you haven't actually understood what you've done wrong until someone else has explained it for you aka a friend. And I do to this day think life and communication would just be so much easier if people weren't figurative and everyone's just literal and said what they mean, said what they felt. You didn't have to sugarcoat all your words, but unfortunately that is not the world we live in. And people need a thick coat of sugar so their ego is not hurt. Number four, do you copy and paste behaviors? 
or do you create an entirely new persona that you put on in every social interaction or situation? That does not align with the, your preferred communication style, your natural communication style. This false persona, this facade that you have created, has it been dictated by non-autistic culture and their behavioural standards? Do you find that you mimic the non-verbal behaviours of your social partner in the situation? Do you create one version of communication or one version of non-verbal communication and use it religiously and rigidly in every single social interaction, whether it aligns with the situation or not? Do you have strategies that make your communication style seem neurotypical? For example, do you naturally look at people in the eye or do you have to force eye contact and in certain ways so you do not appear as though you are not giving eye contact? You may be like me where I have to actively look at them when they are speaking. It's a much higher energy cost because I struggle to process what they're saying as well as look into their eyes. But when I'm actually speaking for myself, when I'm actually trying to think about what I'm saying, process my thoughts and be able to translate them into language, I have to look away. I, ha I can't look at the person. I literally can't. But because I've forced eye contact when they have been speaking, it isn't as noticeable. But does that behavior flow? Was it natural? Was it passive? No, it was forced. It was learned. I have to actively do it to appear as though I'm communicating in a typical way. You may have similar experiences. And because of this copy and paste behaviors, you may find yourself in a really, really uncomfortable position where you actually feel like none of your friends really know you. Even if you have loads and loads of friends, family, relationships, you still may feel really, really isolated because of that lack of identity. I think it's worth noting that I think masking can be very nuanced, especially when you have comorbidities such as ADHD and you take into account personality types and just the nuances of human experience. Because if you come across an extroverted autistic with ADHD, you're gonna have a very different presentation of masking compared to a very shy, introverted autistic. Whilst the ADHD extroverted autistic may succumb to their impulsivity and use audacious behavior to help them gain social acceptance and inclusion, the introverted autistic wouldn't dream of doing that. And they'd take a step back, they'd observe the whole situation and then most probably copy and paste the behavior to blend in. So much more research needs to be done in this area because there is just not enough. Number five, you may have been labelled as gifted as a child or shy or sensitive and you most probably had what I would call a very spiky skill set and by that I mean your talents were exceptional. You were unbelievably gifted at certain things more so than your peers who could do the same skill but you then seemed to struggle immensely in areas that everyone else seemed to find so easy. And of course, others expected you to understand how to do the easy skills. Female autistics with ADHD will 100% get this because executive function deficits really come into play here and you may be exceptional at certain things and then you just can't keep your room tidy and it's just like a bomb has hit it every day. You may have these exceptional ideas, but you can never follow through because your fundamental ability to self-motivate yourself and regulate your behavior is impaired. You feel like you're just constantly polarized and just living in a paradox. You want one thing, you need another. You're good at one thing, but you're bad at something else, which then detracts from your good thing. So yeah, that didn't make sense. But I also think there is this major misnomer that to be autistic, you have to be a little boy who loves trains, who cannot socialize, and you have to have an IQ above 150. And it's just not true. You cannot box a condition and how it presents as such. It is so harmful. It does not cater for the nuances of a human profile. Everyone is different. Everyone is so versatile. So why could we ever believe that a condition would present in the exact same way from individual to individual? Like it makes no sense. 
like make it make sense. And unfortunately this stereotype just perpetuates misdiagnosis and prevents a diagnosis full stop. A lot of females may find that their special interests are more I hate the word, but normal. They don't stick out like a sore thumb. You may have exceptional abilities within the arts, performing, singing, painting, but because that is not seen as odd or atypical, it doesn't draw any attention to it. And it makes sense that a lot of autistics will be exceptional within the arts because there's a high rate and comorbidity of alexithymia and the inability to recognize, understand, and be able to verbalize your emotional state. Well, you may have found a way to do that that isn't through speech. You may paint, you may use music to communicate how you are feeling. You may express yourself through performing. Autism can manifest like that within females. It is a little bit different. And as soon as we can acknowledge and realize that, so many girls will not fly under the radar. Number six you feel constantly exhausted after social events and you may find yourself trying to get out of them in some way or another, whether that be lying to the person who invited you to spare their feelings, lying to your family about attending the event because they deem attendance as a normal thing and assume that these ways of socializing are always enjoyable and energizing when in fact you may find the complete opposite. The way I try to explain it is, because of our innate differences in how we process social information, an autistic will still want to and love socialising. It's just their cup that fills with social interaction is far smaller than a neurotypical's. So your ability to socialise as frequently is diminished. It is limited. But I am generalising and you, it is okay if that's not how you feel. But if you're anything like me, you may have always been invited to parties and gatherings, but you always found an excuse for them because I personally couldn't think of anything worse than willingly going into an overwhelming, overstimulating environment, participating in, in the stupidity that is small talk, trying to flirt if you're at that age, having to communicate in group, groups rather than one-to-one, -one, which is just a lot harder. You have to monitor a lot more and it's a lot more cognitively taxing. I think, and I think neurotypicals honestly do take for granted their innate ease of communication and how natural the back and forth flow of it is. And I actually sometimes envy that they don't have to monitor their behavior in the moment as well as simultaneously monitor their social partners body language, non-verbal behaviours, whilst also listening to everything they have to say and trying to process it. Knowing whether you're talking too much, whether you're talking too little, whether you're asking enough questions, whether the conversation is equally reciprocated, whether you've gone on a tangent, whether you're talking too much and you're not noticing, whether they're bored or whether they're actually engaged, whether they're faking engagement. I don't know. And, and I think it's that that is behind the scenes of someone on the spectrum makes the communication and the interaction a lot more taxing. And if you're anything like me, when you were younger, you may have made excuses and tried to circumvent these events that you didn't want to go to, but you most probably didn't register why at the time. You were just very confused about why you thought so differently towards these gatherings and these social normalities because I was so confused. I should like this. Why do I not? Why do I not enjoy it to the same extent everyone else does? Why do people not struggle with X, Y, and Z in this situation? I, I don't know. Why, why am I like this? But now I know why. And now I know my struggles are actually valid. And I'm hoping you do too. <laughs> Number seven, I wasn't sure whether to include, I'm gonna include it anyway. You may worry about others resisting your diagnosis or your autistic identification or discovery. And that might be why you are seeking a diagnosis if you are, because that's what I did. I was fed up with people questioning the legitimacy of my struggles. Just because they're internalized doesn't mean they're not there. You just can't see them. And I've just become exceptional at hiding them. Not right. I shouldn't have to hide the autistic characteristics that are me. I shouldn't have to hide my struggles because of the stigma associated with them. And I know you shouldn't need to mask. No female should have to consciously or subconsciously hide the innate characteristics and parts of themselves to fit in, to not be bullied, to not be harassed, to not be abused. 
but unfortunately that's the society we live in and you may find that you have done your job so exceptionally well that your family even struggle to understand where you're coming from you may have hidden all of your internalized struggles i never verbalized any of them ever you may stim alone you may suppress your stims altogether which is really detrimental but i understand why you've done it you may have your meltdowns alone never ever declare them to anyone. It was only when I started to learn about the conditions, how it can manifest within females, that I started to be able to pick apart all, all of my neurodivergent traits and describe them to my mum. And she was like, and even then she was like, oh my God, how did I not pick this up? All the oddities that we thought were just Rebecca they were all ways of describing my neurodivergence. It's just, we didn't know and we weren't aware of how autism can manifest and present 10 years ago, especially within females, because like over half of the research is done on males. And if you do have this worry, I actually think it almost consolidates your assumption that you are on the spectrum because masking, hiding yourself, putting on new personas, changing yourself when you are with different people isn't typical. It's not. Everyone masks to some degrees because of social pressure and social convention and the stupid behavioral standards we have set. I agree with that, but the extent and the root reasoning to why autistics mask is different. It is different. I thought putting on a facade, creating personas, manipulating, your whole entire identity into one that fits the cultural standards was normal. I sound so stupid, but when you don't communicate this to anyone, you don't know, you can't compare. And if you relate to some of what I've said or all of what I've said, I seriously would look further into it because I think the fact that you are here watching this video, I think you already know that you are. And if you're still here, I just think if you can afford a diagnosis, great. If you can't, self-diagnosis is completely valid as well. But as soon as you discover and accept that your brain is different, you do have a different neurotype. It allows you the beautiful opportunity to learn about it, learn about your brain, learn why you do things, why you think things in the way you do. It allows you to work with your brain. It enables you to meet your diverse needs and live more authentically. Instead of trying to live up to the delusional expectations and standards society has created that we will innately never meet, you can now embrace your differences create your own metrics of success that align with your neurodiverse brain. You can now stop the emotional, physical and mental abuse that perpetuates autistic burnouts in order to meet these standards. You don't have to cover up your differences. You don't have to feel broken. You don't have to feel lost. You can start to embrace everything and all of who you are. I'd love, love, love to get some feedback. Always open to constructive criticism. I'd love, 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 love to hear what characteristics you related to. And I will see you in the next video.